All right, guys, on this one, we got a 99 Nissan Pathfinder. Uh, this is the RE4 R01A. And the typical problem with this uh, is the planetary gear set goes bad. This was towed in. And of course, in order to uh, push this thing around, once it came off the tow truck, the flatbed, we actually had to take the drive shafts out to push this around. Uh, because it was locked solid and we couldn't even push it because the planets are blown. So we're going to open this up and uh, to confirm that I'm pretty sure that's what it is and we're going to start by uh, taking off the bell housing and take the bell housing off and I'm going to take the extension housing off first. Here's all the wires that are attached that uh, plug in. Uh, here's your uh, neutral switch. Here's your output speed sensor, uh, this one here, but I'm going to be getting, uh, once I get the pan down and the valve body off, I'm going to um, disconnect the solenoids and, and move this harness out of the way. Uh, so let's uh, start breaking this down. Alright, here's the O-ring for the lockup converter. Alright, I'm going to take the bell off now. sensor back out. I gotta take the tail off now. I would like to because uh, once I get this thing halfway down there is a snap ring and I have to get out to get the rest of the gear tray now. So uh, I'm gonna, I took this a uh, couple of outside bolts, uh, four outside bolts that had a wrench out so I just went ahead and did that already. here and I did not see so let's get the wrench out and get that out. extension. Here is the park linkage. Alright, this little piece goes here to keep tension on the spring. Pan 
down, get the valve body out, and try very carefully to remove the wire harness without breaking the tabs that break very easily. Fan is pretty much loaded. All this here, all the metal. Yeah, these things are definitely shot. No doubt about that. Now right, let's get rid of some of this oil. Okay, so first we'll do the uh, filter. Okay, the filter is all uh, loaded up with crap. Here actually is an O-ring. Here is an O-ring for the filter. Okay, so that's shot. We're not going to be using that. All right, now we want to get this uh, tube out. All right, so let me get a let me get a chrome socket. A lot of chunks of uh, I don't know if you can hear them. A lot of chunks of teeth that are. Uh, in the way of getting actually the bolts out, but let me get a, a different socket. Out. 
out so we can get the servo out. Looks like there's all kinds of metal on this lock up solenoid here. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do now is disconnect uh, the solenoids, move the wires away, and get the valve body off. Alright, so we'll take these hold down bracket, take this hold down bracket off. Sometimes these things, these tabs do break. Not much you can really do about that. You just try to be very careful, but again, it's a 99 car. All right, that worked out good. All right, we're gonna get these out of the hold down brackets. All these wires. Okay, they're all out of the brackets. Now, the bracket pull the knees down. Okay, so let's try to do this without breaking them. Okay, there's one. There's two. Alright, and then we got a couple of temp sensors that we're going to uh, remove as well. Got to get the bolt out of this one. Okay, now this bracket, we're going to take this bracket out here and then take the sensor out from the bracket. So this, actually we're just going to leave it right on here. Okay. All right, now we're going to get the valve body out. And we're going to take uh, pretty much uh, a lot of the outer bolts and here a couple of the rows. It's actually been a while since I did one of these, but it's all coming back to me. All right, we're going to get these here. So all along the outer edge. Okay. This one, this one, that one. All right, now we got a couple in here. We gotta get. Let me get this one. your valve body. That is your lockup solenoid. Okay. There's your lockup solenoid and here is your solenoid pack. This valve body, I don't know, a lot of crap on this thing. I'm hoping uh, it's not going to be too bad where we'll have to get one. But for now, we'll just put it aside.
I'm going to take the uh, uh, servo cover off and take the servo out of the band. Is the servo for the band. All right, now let's uh, see if we can get this pump out. Now, what I want to do is just pry it from here, see if I can get this thing to move. Right here is your band. I'll see if I can clean up that, that uh, drum surface. It's not the greatest, but we're going to try to clean it. Okay, hub for the direct input shaft here. And the direct or the high clutch and the hub. Okay, here's the sun gear, which is probably going to be destroyed. Here's the bearing. Sun gear is completely destroyed. Now, this is really great. Band is shot. All pieces of the bearings. I don't even know if I'll be able to get this thing apart. Alright, so I was playing around with this thing and I finally got it out. I used uh, my uh, slide hammer with this attachment right here. A little bit of a pain, but I got it. Here's all the gears. I mean, this thing is really good. So the next thing you got to do is 
this. Give me one sec, some parts just arrived. All right, so I want to try to get this uh, harness out. Now these things has tabs in there. And uh, I have a heat gun I like to uh, just try to, because they're very brittle, sometimes I can soften them up and, uh, and get the tabs out. Squeeze them. Okay, I'm squeezing them. I'm gonna inch it out. Okay, <clears throat> there's a pl hot pl uh, melted washer from the uh, pump. Alright, so now I'm going to take the snap ring out of uh, back here so I can move the uh, output chair up to get the snap ring out. So I'm going to get this snap ring out right here. slide out. There's also a bearing. Okay. Now we can push this up like that to get the snap ring out from here. And then we can take the alpha chip, slide the alpha chip out. Okay, but first there is a bearing, open face bearing, that is in the way. So we'll remove that. That's this one.
tricky to come out. Okay. Little, little tiny snap ring here. All right, now we can slide the output shaft out. Okay, there's that. And the rest of this bad planet set. up here. And here's another hook for the uh, coast clutch and a bearing. Now we'll take the input from out. Okay, here's the input drum. This I'll probably have to get, well you know what, I'll clean it up and uh, may have to get one of these as well. Might even have one. We used to keep this stuff in stock. We used to do so many of these. Okay, you got a, a bearing here and you got a sprig here. I'll take this sprig out, make sure everything's clean. Alright, now we're gonna get the snap ring up or the low reverse clutch. is the anti-rattle clip for the low reverse clutch. I'll just put this over here. Okay, so the next thing All right, first thing we'll do before we pull the uh, um, the rear support out, taking the bolts out of the back here, just gonna take these accumulators out. which is which I honestly like I said it's been so long I honestly don't remember have been replaced of course by the five speeds and the five speeds have big problems with the uh, radiators going bad that's in the old five pathfinders and up okay all right so now we have probably about a t45 it looks like let me get my socket we'll make sure that's right and we'll take these out on them. Sometimes they come out, but it looks like these are staying on. I usually keep these bolts separate so I don't lose the washers. All right, now I got one left. When I take that out, everything will fall. Well, let me see actually if I can hold it. Here's the rear support. You got a bearing here. Here's the springs for the low reverse. And here's the last bolt. And 
and now the piston. Let's see if we'll just get the piston out. Let me get some air. Blow it out with air. So this is completely stripped down now. All right, so let me just uh, clean up a little, get rid of this oil, and we'll open up the drums, we'll open up the pump. And I'll be right back. All right, so we'll open up the big input drum first. All right, we got a couple of snap rings here. The first one is just where the uh, uh, the planet sits. It sits up against the snap ring, so it's like a stop for that. And then the second snap ring, of course, holds the forward clutches in. Both of these snap rings are the same. are down pretty much in the metal. As you can see here, these are all no good, scraped up to steels. I really wouldn't use these. Those are the forwards. Now we're going to get the coast. Again, I uh, do banner kits in these, so that'll be changed. And I usually always change, like the change on these, like uh, if everything was good, the steels, I always change the bottom steel because it gets the groove in it from the, uh, wave, uh, from the wave steel. So I always change uh, the bottom one here. Right, so that's that, and then the sprig, of course, which I'll... Uh, Take out and clean that just a snap ring in here, it pops right out. Alright, the reverse input. There's chunks of planetary all over the place. Okay, these are uh, yeah, a little burnt. But again, it's getting a banner kit. One uh, wave steel, quick cushion, cushion spring. Let me turn my lights back on. Find my 
suck it. That should be the 12. Okay, here we go. gasket right here. Right, so we get these bolts and I got one left that was a little stubborn. Let's see if it'll come out. Alright, here is your stator. Stator looks good. Okay, your uh, pump body and gears. Okay, we're going to take the, uh, the centering piece out, we're going to take the veins out. Okay, here is the gear, the other centering ring. All right, now I'm going to get the slide out so I can show you what happens. I'm going to pop this uh, spring up. slide spring right here and a little uh, stopper at the end of it. Okay, here is the slide itself. Let me get the pivot pin out. Okay, here's the slide. This feels okay. All right, now here's the actuator. Let me just take this out. Here's the actuator for the slide. All right, what happens, and what I do on every time I rebuild, there's actually a very sharp lip that I can feel right here. And from this actuator moving back and forth, that's when it develops a lip, and then it actually will get stuck in the low pressure position uh, and cause the third clutch and band to burn out. So I take my, uh, like my cookie or a file, and I go all along the edge here, all around, until I cannot feel the lip that I'm feeling right now, until it's nice and smooth. Then the slide will not get stuck. So that's what, um, that's what I do with these, because it's very common for that to happen. Okay, so I guess that's really about it on this, uh, on this Pathfinder. Uh, again, the planets are bad. I have to change the input drum. Not really sure. I'm going to clean it up, see what happens. Uh, but we did have bad planets. There actually is uh, uh, um, a fix. I think you block off a loophole. Uh, again, I haven't done one of these in a while. I'm going to go look it up right now. Uh, the fix to make these planets last, I think, to get a more lube. Uh, so I'm going to actually pause it. I want to go look it up quick. And I'll also show you the location of that anti-rattle clip for the low reverse clutch that would go in the case. So uh, once again, I'll be, uh, I'll be back. All right, so I'm gonna give you another shot of these planets. Um, I guess I really, I don't think I really uh, showed that well on the camera for you guys, but uh, this is the front planet. The uh, gears are totally shot. There's not even any gears left in here except for this one, which is ready to fall out. So that's the one planet. The uh, sun gear, which rides on that, is completely shot. All everything's broken here. Uh, here is the rear planet. There's not much left of this at all. And the pieces are falling down, hitting the bench. Uh, the sun gear that rides in here. That's all better. And of course, the ring gear. And this will come apart because there is the sprig here. This will come apart. The forward clutch is right here. Forward clutch is right here. And here is the ring gear, which of course is completely destroyed as well. So I got the whole gear train coming. I'm also changing the forward drum. 
that big drum here. I'm also changing this because down where the seals ride, where the rubber seals ride for the pistons, these are the pistons. Okay, one fits inside. And where the seals ride, it's all you can see, it's all scraped up here from the metal pieces and stuff getting in there. So the rubber seal has to ride on a surface like that, which of course is no good. So I got a drum coming as well, which is typical of what you may have to replace when you have a situation like this with these planets blown. So, all right, I just want to give you another shot of these, uh, these planets on this RE. All right, guys, just want to show the location of that anti router clip on this uh, trans. All right, so if you can see my screwdriver, uh, this is the 12 o'clock position of the case. And then I'm going to count over two, which is right here. And this is roughly the 10 o'clock position of the case. And the anti router clip is going to go right in here. Okay, so this leg uh, is going to sit between the case and the bottom steel. And it'll go, when you, once you put the steel in, you see this has the short tab. This has the short tab here, so this is how it, it's going to sit kind of like this in between the uh, uh, case and the bottom steel. And then you stack everything up. Or if you can stack it up and then you can, you know, other instructions say to squeeze the clip and, and uh, put it all the way down until it locks in between the case and the bottom steel. Uh, I don't know if um, that might be a little tough to do. I think I normally stack up a couple of steels and clutches and then put it in and then finish the stack up. I believe that's what I do. All right, so I just want to show you the location of that. And I'll show you the quick, uh, this doesn't have the, the update, you know, for the planets for the lack of lube. Uh, these planets didn't go bad because of lack of lube. They probably went bad because a bearing or something had failed. Um, but I'll show you quickly uh, where that would be on the early, early ones. All right, the um, rear cooler line goes right in here. Rear cooler line goes right here. And there used to be uh, an orifice with a spring and a ball right there. We used to take that orifice out, probably drill it with a 1 8, 1 8 uh, pipe thread and put a, uh, like a fitting in there or even a, a you know, a solid cup plug uh, and remove the ball and spring. But all this has been eliminated already. This is a 99, it's a much later one. Um, but pretty much to ensure that uh, this thing gets enough lubrication, you wanna make sure your uh, bushings are all good, your case bushings, uh, your bushing in the output shaft, the bushing in the output shaft here, uh, bushing in the case. You wanna make sure all the lube holes are free in the output shaft and what I'm going to do, because i got to order a planet set for my supplier, if it comes with a bushing in the sun gear, I'm going to knock that bushing out. Uh, just to give it that much uh, extra lube. But again, I don't think these went bad because of lack of lube. There is no signs of it getting extremely hot just to bust it up. But I do that as a regular procedure anyway. And of course, got to make sure the cooler is nice and clean. We're going to flush it out if we can't get it clean got to put a radiator in it. All right, guys, so thanks for watching the uh, teardown on this uh, Pathfinder unit RE4RO1A. All right, guys, I uh, just want to give a shot of this uh, valve body. I managed to get all of these valves out of the bores, um, and I cleaned up these, uh, cleaned this up real nice. I actually put it in the uh, wash tank, and you saw how bad this was uh, when I took this thing apart. Here's your uh, shift solenoids. This is your EPC here, and these are your shift. I think you got two shift and probably a coast clutch solenoid. And here's your lockup solenoid. This has really got all kinds of crap on it here. Uh, what I did to get these uh, valves out uh, is this uh, technique I've been using for years to loosen the valve up in the bore. I have a, a scraper that I really don't use anymore and a small hammer. 
and say for instance the valve train is stuck in here I mean sometimes it'll work if the valve is really stuck bad that it may not work but I managed to get every valve out uh, to save this valve body instead of buying another one but I put the uh, scraper underneath the bore and then I just take the hammer and and give it a couple of shots maybe a little harder than that uh, to free it up in the bore now the only other thing that you have to be aware of is there's like a lot of little pins and stoppers that go in here and sometimes when you bang it on the valve this stuff may fly out so you got to be aware of that but uh, what I did was I hit it all around uh, I loosened all the valves up I once I got the pins out that hold the bore plugs in these valves pretty much came out uh, and I got every one of them out and it wasn't uh, really even that bad so these things were stuck in there and I thought I was gonna have to get another valve body but uh, you know I was doing that with the scraper and the hammer and they, and they actually freed up and I was I managed to get them out so I'm gonna put this uh, back together now and at least I was able to save this valve body and uh, put it back together and continue the rebuilding process all right guys uh, just wanted to give you a shot of this and uh, uh, that's it have a good day